not to eat, take down the tree.
tell you that you put people in situations where they can be helpful to those that need it. Um, help us keep those people in prayer. Um, and people that are fighting with COVID, people that have uh, uh, goofed up immune systems that are keeping them from going out the way they want to. Father, I ask you to keep all people that are being isolated uh, mentally healthy. Um, so many are suffering uh, various psychoses these days with regard to the isolation. Um, and it can be any number of things from depression, on and on, you name it. They need to see your hands around them, Father. And to the degree that we are we are able and enabled to help anybody in, those, in any of those situations, I would ask that you uh, give us the intelligence to go do that or to um, send money, send, give blood, whatever we can do to, to help the situation and not be part of the problem. Um, help, us in our, help us in our serving you um, this week to come. I ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen. Number 705, it is well with my soul. That's what they say, it's 705, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you.
good thing is I can still be within like three feet of him. I can still be within three feet of each of you, so don't fear. <laughs> Oh, no. So you can dress me up, but you can't take me out. <laughs> We've known that for years. Oh, shush. <laughs> what you get for saying such things about me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, so I've been doing some studies and things like that in the last week. Hanging by the phone. <laughs> My brother Todd is home. And, uh, so, well, uh, he, ha he, did have to, he did have to go back to email because he, he went through a, an issue when he was back home at first. It, it turned out to be um, an anxiety attack. Uh, but it was so bad that uh, he was on the phone with my sister, thank the Lord. And my sister goes, hang up, call 911 right now. 911, now. Sarge, we always, Leanne, my sister, was the one girl and had two brothers on each side of her. She had, I was the oldest, then Todd, then Leanne, and then there was Michael and John after her. So, kind of like me. We've kind of, we've kind of, yeah. Yeah, very much so. And we've uh, we've often uh, for referred to her as the Sarge. Yep. And the Sarge. We most certainly is. So what she says, we brothers, whether we agree with her or not, do it. Right. Nine one one. Hang up now and call nine one one. Get me. So uh, yeah, but it was just a a very uh, and, and Todd hasn't hasn't really ever had that kind of a thing before, but it was, you know, after the heart surgery and everything. I've got to imagine, I've got to imagine questions of mortality came yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the night hours or, you know, um, and it's, it can be kind of confounding sometimes um, when we see how old we're getting and we see uh, how unyoung we are now. We can't do things like we used to do, and it, it, it disturbs us. Um, the, the COVID virus um, has affected our son. Uh, Ian is nowhere near as strong as he used to be, and he's concerned about it. This causes other types of anxiety, and there are people struggling with anxieties all over the place and they really need your prayers and we really need each other's prayers because we're there too we're going through all kinds of different anxieties ourselves um the question though like with especially with todd is um, mortality when when is this day going what day is going to be our last because we're going to have one and the question as to whether we have um, longevity um, really hammers home sometimes and it can be a very, very troubling thing to confront. Um, we have a sign on the front of this church, um, Christ is the answer. Um, we will we're going to go away from here, but wow, what we're in for is incredible. And if you thought the Mars landing of Perseverance and was so aptly named <laughs> was amazing to see. Wait, it's well, was it Al Jolson said you ain't seen nothing yet, right? Famously said that at the end of his show, you ain't seen nothing yet. So we have a we have a, a savior who has promised us a place with. Him in God's glory, and he said, if that wasn't true, then I would have told you. So I believe him, and that's my prophecy. I was uh, doing some study on prophecy and how it lines up with anxiety and what can fool people sometimes 
and what we need to replace worry with. Um, everybody's, almost everybody's worried, um, concerned, you know, and there's, there's reasons why they ought to be. Um, what was it just yesterday, somebody saw a huge chunk of airplane land in their front yard yeah. in Colorado. Denver. And not on the house. But the person comes out and he's standing next to this gigantic thing that landed in the yard. Uh, so you never know. Um, I don't know this uh, airplane that apparently lost its engine and was trying to shred itself to bits was landed safely. So there's another pilot who deserves a medal. Another pilot, and it's not just Captain Sully who deserves one, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, and this was uh, at the first time that I remember being on an airplane. Our first trip to Europe was uh, just exciting for me, just absolutely. And we're off the ground, and we're up in the air, and I go, wow, if something goes wrong now, that's going to be it, man. And I was thrilled. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I tell people that, and they go, you're insane. Yeah. And I say, yes, I am, because of the answer on the front of the church. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. You ain't seen nothing yet. And the glory to come is going to be so much more incredible than the glory we already have. But we do have glory now. We do have it. Um, so many people are looking for answers. They're looking at what's the future going to bring. They're very concerned about it. Very, very concerned about it. And I, I'm not going to call on you just now because I want to ask a question. Prophets in the Bible. We have writings about prophets and prophecy and things of that nature. How long did it take for, oh, let's say Jeremiah, to utter prophecy and for it to come true? Wasn't he dead before it came true? Wasn't he dead before it came true? <clears throat> no. No, because well, see, during the time he was prophesying the end of Judah, right? The land was going to get scorched, torched, rubble. Judah was done. In the middle of prophesying that message for God, because God told him, God also told him something else, which was buy land in Judah. <laughs> and he's like, what? Buy land, because here's the future. It took 40 years. Ezekiel, or not, I'm sorry, Isaiah, how long did he prophesy? And the things that he was saying, how long did it take for it to come true? Some of it was... At least 40 years. At least. Right? And what was the prophecy? Everything's going to go really, really bad, and then God's going to bring you back together. God's going to take care of the bad situation. The problem was, <laughs> Isaiah and Jeremiah didn't say, well, you're going to have to wait 40 years for this to see. They just kept on saying it and over and over and over again. And people just weren't believing them because some people did believe them and say, well, you know, I can see that coming. Um, the people that would hear the prophecy reacted in any number of ways, right? People that heard the, these prophets. I can see the way it's going, but that's probably likely going to happen, right? Here's a prophecy for you. In August this year, it very likely will not snow here. Ah. Thus saith the Lord, huh? No, 
That's not the same as prophecy. What is prophesying? What is, what is it? It's not what you think, I'll guarantee you. Something that is supposed to happen is yet to come? No. Nope. Okay. It can have that part in it. So you're not off base there. But that's not what it's about. It's relaying a message from God. Say that again. It's relaying, <coughs> relaying a message from God. It's relaying a message from God. And usually the message is stop yeah. doing what you're doing and turn around and come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost all, no, it is always. Change. Stop what you're doing. Do something absolutely different. That's the prophecy. It's got nothing to do with, or the major impact of prophecy is to get you to stop doing what you shouldn't be doing and to do what you should be doing. And that's it. That's all. It might say about things to come. Yes, that's true. It might tell you bad things that are going to happen if you continue to do the things you shouldn't be doing and are stubbornly holding on to them anyway. Bad things are going to happen if you don't, all right? My brother Todd, after the operation, man, he's... I, I'm fearful for him because he's going to be a health food Nazi now, I think. I hope, you know, he's going to say, and, and he's, he's telling me, man, because unless you felt that pain, man, there's no, no describing it to anybody. And I'm, I'm going to be telling people, man, stop having red meat three times a week. Have it maybe like twice a month or, <laughs> but he's going to go on a holy terror now because he wants to live healthy. He's seen the light. He's seen the light. <laughs> Praise the Lord, he's seen the light. <clears throat> Stop doing things that are really unhealthy. Pastor Dave, like drinking a cup of coffee a day. Yeah. Spilling it on your shirt. Making yeah. fun of your wife's radioactivity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see? Ow. Yeah. <laughs> light up your life. <laughs> well, sh stop doing what you're doing. What, what what else does prophecy good for? Encouragement. Encouragement? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, what prophet in the last, oh, 240 years has been writing? Name one. Jesus. No, I said within the last 240 years. Oh, 240 years. Yeah. Well, okay, let's say in the last 2,000 years. Or, let's make it real safe, last 1,900 years. Zero. Man. Wow, Jesus. Still Jesus. It's, it's, it's the, answer, the sign of the church. Christ is the answer. So, what am I getting to? Prophecy is an interesting thing, and here's an, here's an interesting part of prophecy. If people are so anxiety ridden and they hear somebody describe a future that's going to be wonderful, aren't they going to listen to it, pay attention to it? Aren't they? Of course they will. Why? Because they absolutely need to hear that. Things were going bad in Judah. Even though they had the temple, and Jeremiah was saying, this temple's going to be ripped down, and we're all doomed. And nobody wanted to hear that message. Because the people were acting bad, horribly. To the point where God said, you're not my people anymore. I'm sick of you. Now I'm going to bring it back. And for the next couple of generations, you guys are toast. We're going to be in 
2 Peter. Here's our buddy Peter, who somehow or other got real smart. And of course we knew who made him smart. The kingdom of God made him smart. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit in him made him smart. And he was the type of person who was going to be a leader and a missionary, and he was going to save an awful lot of lives. The second letter of Peter. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called, that hath called us to glory and virtue. That's a nice hello, isn't it? Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, such as Was Peter, when he's writing this letter, prophesying? Yes. All right. What did these first churches not have that we do? Written scriptures. Bible. The Testament written in his blood. The New Testament. What we had was the Old. It was full of prophets and prophecies. Right? As these disciples and men like Paul, Paul wasn't alone. I mean, we've got his letters, but there were others. There were many, many others. In Sunday school, adult Sunday school, Bill was reading a letter from John written to a woman who led a church back then. Amazing. <laughs> Well, that should change your point of view of women in the pulpit, shouldn't it? Or should it? Don't think you know the answer until you look into what the prophet said. Right? Was John a prophet? Yeah. What were they prophesying? The Word of God. Pre-written down. The Holy Spirit of God was giving them the insight and the intellect. This is Peter. Well, what's John going to do? <laughs> right? Feed my sheep, Peter. Okay, but well, what's John going to do? Uh, that guy. That guy. That's, that's this guy. God can change you. That's the prophecy. Change. Cephas. Simon Peter, become this brilliant man. Okay. <laughs> All you had to do was say, All right, thank you. Yes. Seek after it like he, he did. I want, I want to be better. I want to be smart. I want to be holy. I want to be like this man. I love Jesus. And what a change. And he went and talked in front of thousands of people. And he changed their lives because he was prophesying. He was giving them the word of God. Change. Accept Christ as Savior. Live like Christ, your Savior. Be more like him all the time. In other words, stop being like you. And that's the prophecy. And then it got written down. And this is most likely why, in the last 1900 years, 
We have not had a prophet that said anything that actually came true. Except for me saying it's probably not going to snow this coming August. Yeah. Could it snow? Oh, you bet. <laughs> One of the things you weigh prophets for is did what they say came true? Now, you can say, well, I heard the pastor prophesy, and you know what? We're in September now, and all August, he was absolutely right. It didn't snow. Good, Dave. I got one out of, uh, what, a thousand? Right? People love to, well, they love to quote Nostradamus. <laughs> There's a whole bunch there, too, that we can unpack. He's not a prophet. He never was. You can look at things and you can make educated guesses about what's going to happen. They built perseverance for how long? How long did it take them to build this thing that landed on Mars? Including planning? Yes. Probably about 50 years. Well, no, the project. Let's just stick to the project. Let's say 15. And they prophesied that this machine was going to land on Mars right where it did. No. 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 They did their best to try to make sure that happened. Could anything have gone wrong? Absolutely. All right. So is that prophecy? No, that's science. <laughs> that's physics. Okay? This horrible thing that happened in Texas, were the people prophesying about it? No. There were people that were probably expecting it, though. And when it hit, and boy, did it hit. Right? Educated guesses. That's what you mean. I hear a lot of prophets these days. Guess what? So far, they've all been wrong. <laughs> At least once. And according to the scripture, that pretty much takes care of them. <laughs> Next. Trump's not going to be impeached. Guess what it was? Twice. Was he convicted? No. Doesn't matter. Hey, Betty, if I sue you for whatever, if I bring a suit to you against you in court, have you been sued? Yes. Did I win the suit? No. But you got sued. It's the procedure that we use to have civil tort law taken care of. Gladys, if I decide to take you to court and sue you, you got sued. The judge takes the suit and tosses it out and says, Gladys is a wonderful person. What are you picking on her, her for, you jerk? Get out of my court. You still got sued, honey. The judgment is the other part of the process, isn't it? Well, that gets confused a lot. People confuse terms all day long. Does it mean that a, one of these Latter-day Prophets has been correct? Where is the message to change in these Prophets? Where is the message to you? in these prophets. Now we're anxiety ridden, so we're liable to hear and believe almost anything. What is the rule of thumb for the prophets of old? 100%. No, what is the message? We, we just said it. Change. Change. Stop what you're doing. That's all they were. If the people had listened to God, things would have not worked out as horribly as they did. Just a couple of weeks ago, we were going through this one guy who was a prophet. Jonah. Not a good, well, I mean, he obviously was a good prophet, but boy, was he a problem. He needed a big fish to swallow him up and spit him on the ground. 
But his prophet, this prophet, his message was to go through Nineveh and go, change or you're doomed. And they listened. And he didn't like the fact that they listened, but that was prophecy. There's no other kind of prophecy in here. Even the disciples in the New Testament, before the New Testament is written, their job is to go to people, speak the word of God to them, and help them change, help them become new again through the blood of Christ Jesus. And that is the only kind of prophecy there is. Does it talk about futures? Yes, sometimes. Peter, verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, comes to you, proclaiming Jesus Christ, who he loved so deeply because he was saved despite the fact that the night he got arrested, Peter denied him three times. He understood the fight. He understood the sword. They come to arrest him. Peter takes the sword out, cuts that guy's ear off. Jesus turns around, heals the guy's ear. And Peter's like, what's wrong with you, Jay? <laughs> what are you doing that for? I'm standing up for you and you're, I had it with you. I'm going fishing. And then he comes back and Peter's fishing. Anxiety ridden, upset, and he sees the Lord on the shore, and he's like, <sighs> and he jumps out of the boat, and he runs to this Lord as fast as he possibly can, swimming, getting all dirty, sandy, and running to him and going, hi, what are you doing back? Do you love me? Yes. Feed my sheep. And that's what Peter did. He changed. And the kingdom of God came on him, the spirit came on him and gave him this intellect and gave him this fierce love for people who were lost and was proclaiming change. The knowledge of God be unto you, peace. Exceeding great and precious promises, just like Jesus promised him if he would do just one thing. And what was that one thing? Peter allowed himself to change. He understood the sword isn't always the answer. He understood brute force wasn't always the answer. It is. It really is which is a hell of a thing for an Irishman to do. I'm tired. Kathy and I are walking through Belfast and we're crying because of the ignorance of the Irish people and the bigotry. Still, yes, they, they've achieved peace. It's, it's been expensive. But there's still people that will not change. And they are wrong. And they're anxiety driven and they're looking for somebody to say, no, no, you keep doing what you're doing, it'll be fine. Everything will be fine. We're going to be great again. Guess what? If you're not changing and following the Lord Jesus, it's going to go bad, Jonah. It's going to go bad, Nineveh. And you'll deserve it because you got told. But no, you want to listen to the guy on name it because he's a modern day prophet no this is the prophet and they were teaching part of prophecy is teaching there will come a day in August 
If the Lord is good to me, and if I'm following him, I'll get to see that day in August. It's immaterial whether it snows that day or not. If from this day till that day in August, I follow him, everything is going to be great because I'm following the one who is the answer. It says so right on the front of the box here. whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Wow, that's weird. They had that problem back then too? How odd. I thought that just came about in the last 20, 30 years. Because you know Clinton. Or because you know FDR. Or because you know they've changed the Constitution. Yes, it's called an amendment. Boy. <laughs> and besides this, verse 5, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to your virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. What is temperance? Control. Self control. Every recovering addict in the world struggles with it every hour of every day. Mm. Temperance. Denying yourself that which you so want. <clears throat> Before my brother's surgery, he called me. He wanted what might have been a last meal. He wanted me to get a bunch of Phil's chicken for him, break the big thing of mashed potatoes and all kind of ribs and stuff. <sighs> Before he went in for his triple Y bath. Mm. I was like, mm. okay. Okay, I'll call you back because when we can try to figure out how he's going to pay me because I don't have money just to do that, right? So he goes, so I'll call you back, and I immediately went up did a prayer. I said, Father, please help Todd not want this. An hour and a half later, he calls me back. He goes, you know what, Dave, forget it. I, you know, I'm going to the hospital for heart surgery. And I was like, oh, that's a shame, Todd. <laughs> right? No, no. Uh, Maybe after I get the, the operation, then I'll have it. Okay, maybe you will. Right? I prophesied. I prophesied. I prayed that Todd would change his mind. He did. That's part of it. You guys prophesy all the time. You don't even realize. You don't even realize it. When you show somebody a Christ-like love and compassion, you're preaching the word. You might not be saying anything, but you're preaching almightily. And you're giving them an idea that a person can change. Like Peter, who wrote this letter. And they're seeing something new in you, and they're seeing something different in you, and they're going, well, that's weird. And at least it's putting a question mark in their head. And you're not talking about anything about the future. Except showing them a possibility for theirs. And a better future than the ones they're going on. Knowledge. Temperance. Verse 6. To temperance, patience. You're not looking for them to change right away. Jeremiah. Things are going to go bad, Judah, if you don't change your way. Forty years he said that. I'm so done with this person. Thank God God wasn't done with you, clown. Peter.